Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about front-end architecture. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posted on a video I made which was called How can I become a software architect fast? And the short version of that video is basically that uh, the person had been like a software developer for two years and now he's going to be a or he or she is going to be a software architect and I basically state that uh, depending on the level you are either in for a really rough ride or you're going to crash and burn because it's too early for you to become a software architect uh, because depending on what we mean by a software architect it might be something that you will not have the knowledge to do at such an early stage in your career and this qu the question is then, what about front-end architecture? I feel that it requires less knowledge. Well, uh, that's also something that I touched on in that other video where, like, what does it mean to be a software architect? Now, I just went with the assumption in that video that, okay, you're talking about it like a traditional architect, system architect, which is usually someone who is operations oriented, where most of it is about infrastructure. Like, you're planning out uh, projects and you are planning out infrastructure and how different teams are going to work with each other and connect and so forth. You're very high level, very macro uh, instead of micromanagement. If it comes to front-end architecture, you're more micromanagement or like you're more involved at the application level. And if you are going to be that sort of person, uh, I would say that it's still about the same level of complexity because for you to be effective at that job, uh, I, I like to say that being an architect in IT is very similar to being like the composer or like the... What's the guy? I can never remember. Like the like the lead uh, in an orchestra. Uh, and if you're going to direct all these people, because that's basically what it comes down to. It's like architects at this level, it's very hard to determine what an architect is and what like the most senior person on the jo uh, job is. But to me, an architect that is involved in say front-end, a front-end architect, you're basically expected to be the most senior and experienced person on the job if you're going to be effective at that, at that job. It doesn't have to be that, and we're going to touch on that as well. It doesn't have to be that way, but that is what the ideal should be. And as you can imagine, front-end is big. Big, big, big. It is at least as big as, you know, the standard boilerplate stuff you're going to do if you do cloud solutions. Because guys, I know that it sounds like cloud is going to be like this big area where, oh, there's so many options. There's so, yeah, absolutely, there's a lot of options. But a lot of the stuff related to cloud level architecture is abstracted away to the point now where it's not like you have to know everything that has ever been done in IT, which was used to be the case when, let's say, that you did on-prem stuff. Well, once again, it depends on like what type of architect are you going to be. But front-end, guys, it is enormous. I even today, I will say to you that finding a front-end engineer that knows everything is not possible. So what does that say about being a front-end architect? Well, hopefully you're going to put two and two together and you're going to realize that if you can't find a single front-end developer who knows everything, how the hell are you going to be an architect uh, uh, without fairly extensive experience? Because you are basically going to lead and set standards and inform and uh, support everybody else. And in order to, for you to be able to do that, it's like I like to say, an architect should be ideally a general. A person who has the knowledge and the experience from being a like should have a, you know ideally a person who started out at the lowest level of the army and worked their way up and became a general through experience because that is the only way you're going to be effective at the job. You can't study to become an architect and then be effective at the job because you simply do not know the levels un underneath you. And that is, in my opinion, the number one problem in management uh, in practically every organization, uh, all the way up to the government, countries, and so forth. Uh, you have people who have never seen how things work at the lower levels, managing people they don't understand. And you can be that type of architect, but you're never going to be effective at it. So that's why I say, depending on like what we mean, the complexity is basically the same, because you've 
practically need a lifetime. Well, not a lifetime, but you need several years of experience to be able to do this job effectively. Now, there is something that I have to mention, and I hate the fact that I, ha I, I hate that this is the way it is, but I'm going to tell you anyway. So, the overall understanding in IT today of what good front-end looks like, like quality front-end solutions and front -end quality front-end architecture and so forth, is so low, so hilariously low, that even a subpar developer can become a front-end architect given the right circumstances. The reason why I say that is because it's the same reason why a lot of uh, front-end developers and uh, companies are having issues with front-end in general. It, it comes down to the fact that you do, people do not understand how to write good front-end architecture, front-end applications, and so forth. So the industry, there's almost this understanding that front-end is always a problem area. It's always an issue, and it's like you, you kind of treat. It's actually funny because the the way that you look in terms of expertise, a lot of companies will look at the backend developers and kind of judge them a little bit harsher related to like engine, hardcore engineering skills and so forth. And a lot of the front-end developers have an easier time uh, swinging uh, that they are applicable for a position, even though they have like a fraction of the knowledge necessary to do the job. I know this myself because I interview a lot of these people and they are gainfully employed and I can't even imagine how they do in a full and honest day of work because they don't even know what an API is. Uh, so the it's it's like uh, front-end is a very, very Wild West type of environment where a lot of things uh, kind of just go. It kind of works. Uh, even if they're uh, horrible, because there's not that much understanding of what it actually means to do good work in front end, because people kind of just chalk it down as this uh, thing that is always a problem. Uh, I, I, I don't want to get into why I think that that is, but that is the way most of the front end communities are. You know, that's how it works. So you can actually, in a way, become it's a, in a way it can be easier for you to become a front end architect than like a system like an operations and so like a traditional system architect uh, simply because the 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 perceived quality of front end is so low that it's actually that most companies they just expect front front end to be bad so if it's because you are a bad architect or it's just because it's front end right that's kind of lost in translation it's really hard uh, to pinpoint if it's the front-end architect's fault or if it's just front-end is bad, right? Uh, and you can expl uh, you can actually use that to your advantage. And I mean, that's not unheard of in back-end either or other areas as well. But uh, I mean, that's the thing, right? That's what's so hard about having an architect and having someone above that architect who doesn't really understand, as I said, the lower level. Because how do you evaluate if the head honcho, which is usually the architect, if that person is good or bad? Because that person can, of course, just point and say, yeah, like all of these developers are incompetent or whatever. Uh, the other side of that uh, though is that if you do find a company that actually knows what a good front-end engineer looks like you're not going to be able to swing uh, swing that as easily because uh, I know contrary to popular belief but there are actually competent front-end engineers uh, that actually are at an architect level and actually know how to structure a code base in a nice and efficient manner. It's just that they're so rare that most treat them as like these unicorn type of characters. But I don't because I've met them. So what I want you to take away from this is that uh, becoming a front-end architect, uh, depending on how we want to define it, is basically as complicated as becoming any type of architect. An architect in essence is usually well, it's supposed to be, because you can be other things as well, but ideally it should be an individual who has a fairly deep understanding of the thing that they are an architect of. So if it's operations or front-end, back-end, doesn't really matter. They should be a very experienced person that can make good informed decisions because their decisions and like their support towards the company is primarily focused on setting standards and setting up like these macro type of decisions that affect a lot of teams and a lot of people. They're, uh, as I said, like they're the general basically. Now, in front end, that is actually a very tough job 
it's actually a front end is enormous. You you think that back end is enormous. You might think that all, uh, like um, front end uh, or the operations area is also enormous. And sure, they are enormous. But front end is large, like large as all hell. And there's the, all this diversity, and you have like tons of different practices and methods of doing things and there are so many ways that you can mess up a front-end project and if you're going to be an art and the best part is that everybody has a different idea of how to do it as well so you're going to have to deal with that uh, what's interesting is though uh, that uh, the perception is usually that front-end is always bad because of reasons so you can actually be a front-end architect even though you're not a very good uh, front-end developer uh, and people will probably just chalk it down as oh no it's you're not the problem it's just front-end right that's not going to work in a company who knows what a good front-end uh, developer looks like but I'm very sorry to say that uh, that's not the, co the that's not the normal company the norm is that companies have no idea what a good front-end developer looks like have a great day